Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Calabra. We are uh, here in the Anguilla Air Services uh, livery, uh, the Britain Norman Islander. And we are at, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of this little airport. Uh, it is Benjamin Noriega. Benjamin Rivera Noriega Airport here in uh, Culebra. And uh, this is going to be kind of fun because this is... Um, this uh, airport is from the developer SLH Sim Designs. Very small airport. It's, you know, pretty simple airport, obviously. Nothing too elaborate, but they did a really good job. You can actually go in the terminal, and it looks exactly like it does in real life. Uh, all the internal, you know, uh, the seating, the the signage, everything is all is all legit. It's really pretty neat. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to take too much time. But uh, external power supply on, rotating beacon on, mixtures and props full forward, master and battery switches on, avionics master switches on. Fuel valves open, fuel pumps on, magnetos on uh, number two. Um, everything is removed. Let's make sure there is nobody outside to kill or maim, and I don't believe there is. Let's crack the throttles. Um, let's hit the starboard engine first. Alright, manifold pressure is good, oil pressure is good. Uh, left engine. Come on. Kick it over. Good start. Manifold pressure is good, oil pressure is good. Magnetos to both. Let's close the starter cover, turn the fuel pumps off. Lean the mixtures for taxi. Always remember you cannot lean the mixtures too much. Uh, turn the external power supply off, nav and strobe lights on. I'm going to turn the panel lights on a little bit anyway because we've got some. It's getting towards dusk and I'm going to need them at some point, I'm sure. Uh, that's all good. I've talked about this. It doesn't connect the way it should. Um, let's put in our radio frequencies here. Alright, we do have somebody on approach, but this is an uncontrolled field. 122.8 is what we want and then we'll put them in 119.4 and we can contact them when airborne so first uh, so we're going to Beef Island which is um, Which is also by SLH Sim Designs. Beef, their Beef Island, it's uh, Tango Uniform Papa Juliet. It just came out. And it looks pretty amazing, so I want to go check it out. Release the parking brake. Get ourselves moving here. And engage the brakes. Because we want to test the brakes. Alright, altimeter is 1014. Four, and I want to talk a little bit about altimeters as we get moving. So we got the altimeter setting in, it's correct, and our altitude is indicating a zero, or darn close to it, right? This field has a has an airport elevation of 49 feet. Now, I don't know if you can tell real well, right? Yeah, I'm sure you can, that this, this airport, this runway is sloped pretty dramatically actually and so at some place on this field which they call the airport reference point which is just a random point on the airport um, they measure the altitude there above mean sea level and that's the airport elevation and in this case it's 49 feet so the, if the airports at 49 feet and we have the correct altimeter setting something seems wrong no I mean it's it's got uh, how can we how can our field elevation be zero or how can our 
uh, altimeter be indicating zero if the field elevation is 49 feet. Well, the rule is, at least for IFR flight, that your altimeter has to read within 75 feet of field elevation um, to be legal for IFR flight. So, in that case, and you can see the altimeter is going up here as we're climbing the hill, right? Um, and so actually we're perfectly fine because we are within 75 feet of field elevation. This is a VFR, VFR flight, um, but it's never a bad idea to be, to kind of mind IFR rules when flying VFR because the IFR rules are meant to keep you safe. Um, now I'm going to come over to the right side of this taxiway because as I found out the hard way earlier, you can get your wings stuck on that bush. And if that happens, you ain't going nowhere. Alright, so let's hold short. So, so your altimeter setting could give you what seems like an incorrect um, elevation, but it's actually not. We'll talk a little bit more about altimeters as we go. Fuel pumps on, mixtures and props full forward. I do not see any traffic. So... Two labor traffic and Willa 264 taking runway 13 for departure to the east, left crosswind departure off 13. Cool labor. Um, all right. Everything's looking good. I like getting as much runway behind me as possible, or in front of me as possible, I suppose. So we're going to come over here. See, now we're right at about 50 feet. And why? And, and the reason the field elevation will change or be off, be a little bit off from... Because you're, you're flying off a METAR setting that might be 40 minutes old or 50 minutes old. And so the, you know, the pressure has changed. All right. And that's why you'll get a different reading. So, takeoff power is coming in, takeoff power is set, engine instruments are in the green, airspeed is alive, accelerating normally, 50, 65, and rotate, and there we have our cool little airport. over to San Juan Approach. 
San Juan approach, Anguilla 264. Anguilla 264, approach. Approach Anguilla 264, we are just off Culebra eastbound, climbing through 1,300 for 3,000. Anguilla 264, squawk 1467, uh, St. Thomas altimeter 2, nano, nano, 5. 1467, altimeter 2995 for Anguilla 264. Angela 264, radar contact, one two mile west of St. Thomas at 1,700, clear into the class Charlie airspace. Uh, you're going to be violent, right? That's affirmative, be violent for Angela 264. Angela 264, Roger, clear into the St. Thomas class Charlie airspace. Cleared in the class Charlie, uh, Angela 264. Um, so another thing about altimeters, so I'm used to being here in the U.S., I'm used to I'm used to inches of mercury which is what he just gave me, 2995. Right, in, in a lot of other places in the world, they do it by Q&H, including down here in the Caribbean. Um, so I, d I actually don't know really the ins and outs of Q&H. Um, So I don't really know the ins and outs of Q&H, um, but with inches of mercury, so inches of mercury, for every inch you go up or down, or for every inch of mercury increase or decrease, you're going to get an increase in altitude of a thousand feet. So one inch equals a thousand feet. So let's say your altimeter is off by three, uh, you know, point three, right? Uh, we'll, we'll do this trick here in a second. I'm just trying to trim this out. So I've got the engines turned, the volume of the engines turned way down because I've noticed myself that um, the voice is not really very loud on the videos. Not that I really want it to be loud, but I certainly want it to be understandable. <laughs> so I had to turn it down. Uh, I had to turn the engines down a little bit, even more. Um, so, and let's get a little rudder trim in here. Alright. And that's actually how you do it. You do you do uh, trim these things, or, or you kind of balance out the two engines by sound. Um, you can hear the warble if they're not in, in sync. Um, so let's say uh, we've got uh, an altimeter setting of 299 or 5. Now let's go uh, to 895. See what our altimeter is going to read. Okay, 
Hmm. Well, it should be. <laughs> it should be a thousand. It's actually uh, two eight nine five. It should be a thousand feet. Am I reading this correctly? Two eight nine five. Five. I think we may have just discovered something, folks. Let's go to three zero nine five. This is really not what I was intending to do. Well, clearly. <laughs> How interesting is that? So either the airplane's altimeter is set incorrectly, or is calibrated incorrectly, or uh, there's something wrong with the simulator. Uh, Center Anguilla 264, can you confirm the altitude uh, you're seeing for me? And I go at two six four. I got you uh, three thousand one hundred Saint Thomas altimeter two nine nine five. Perfect. Thank you very much. Rule two six four. Um. So what I was going to tell you is that that's really interesting. Now I'm curious. So uh, the altimeter should change by a thousand feet for every inch of mercury change and clearly that's not happening in the sim and what I was going to tell you or uh, you know kind of the, the sort of the importance of it uh, more particularly for IFR flight um, if you are off by let's say your minimums are 300 feet even if you're off by a tenth of an inch, right? Like if you if you're supposed to if the altimeter is two nine or nine or five and you've got two nine or seven five, let's say, right? That's a two hundred foot difference to the in the wrong direction. So you would actually hit the ground if you're flying an ILS and the ILS minimums are two hundred feet, which is usually what ILS minimums are. You would hit the ground at the minimums on the approach like you'd be if you're in the clouds and you're going you know 500 for, for 200 400 for 200 100 for 200 200 for, you know then, then you call minimums you would hit the ground when you call minimums and that would be an unfortunate experience experience um, so that kind of tells you what the importance is of altimeter settings and I, I don't know why uh, it is incorrect here in the sim but it is uh, I'm gonna have to check um, going the wrong way to get to where I'm going, but this is the fun way, and we are VFR, so we're going to have some fun. Um, just enjoying this low and slow scenery here. Um, I meant to actually, uh, there's, a, there's a bar that has a webcam on St. John, but I meant to try and find, and I might still try and find it, I think I sort of know where it is. I don't know if this is really... 
Angela 264, Mix ready to runway 07 at Beef uh, Information Hotel is current altimeter 297. Alright, make straight in runway 7, altimeter 2997 for Anguilla 264. Um, so, yeah, it should be. Let's we'll see if we can have a look here. Uh, they've got a webcam and it's a really <laughs> astounding view. Uh, as we look down on Charlotte Amalie. No, this is Red Hook, I think it's called actually. Uh, I could be wrong about that too. Um, so, so that's why altimeter settings are important. Now, one other little piece of information. People talk about so one of the one of the equipment requirements for IFR flight is a sensitive altimeter. Now, a sensitive altimeter is not an altimeter that needs your support in times of trouble. A sensitive altimeter, if you ask a hundred pilots, a hundred instrument rated pilots, what a sensitive altimeter is and what makes an altimeter sensitive, I think you might get a hundred of the same answer and I think a hundred of them would probably be wrong. Um, so it should be, this bar should be like right over in here somewhere. Be right there. Um, so what is a sensitive altimeter and what is the wrong answer that most people will give you? Well, the, the wrong answer that most people are going to give you is most people are going to say a sensitive altimeter is an altimeter with an adjustable, you know, that you can adjust for barometric pressure. This is called the Colesman window. And most pilots would say to you, well, a sensitive altimeter is an altimeter with a Colesman window. That is not correct. That is not correct. Uh, and I'm flying over a national park, which I don't think is legal. So that bar should be somewhere along one of these ridges here. It's got an amazing view. It's called the windmill bar. Anyway, um, straight in runway 7, what's the weather at? Um, a sensitive altimeter is an altimeter with 20 foot markings. See these? These 20 foot markings? 900, 920, 940, 969, 80, 1000. That is what a sensitive altimeter is. A sensitive altimeter is not an altimeter with a Colesman window. It's an altimeter with 20 foot markings. And a Colesman window. Uh, and there's actually, uh, I wouldn't refer to them as a famous YouTube couple, but there's a YouTube couple, or no, maybe they're, I think these are actually Instagram people. Maybe they don't, maybe they're not YouTube people. Instagram people with, uh, who fly uh, a Cessna 150. IFR all over the place and they do not have an IFR legal altimeter. So a VFR altimeter um, 
has 50 foot markings. So we'll go 800, 850, 900, 950. So it's got 50 foot markings. Um, and these guys fly this thing all over the place. IFR. Uh, with a with an altimeter that is not legal for IFR flight. Um, I would venture to guess most flight instructors, most most double eyes, most instrument instructors probably don't know that that that's the, that that's what the rule is. Most people, mo like I said, most people just oh, it's the Colesman window. It's not. It has to have the twenty foot markings to be a sensitive altimeter. Um. And I would actually like to know what what avionics shop certified that plane to be legal IFR. Would it be a file to Canadian Express five one two Roger Squawk one four six five same intentions. Same intentions. And Canadian Express uh, 512, uh, you're going to San Juan? That's correct. That's correct, it's not a proper rating. Uh, uh, Affirmative. Canadian Affirmative. Express 512, Roger, thank you. Radar contact 3 miles west of Dorado Radio Beacon. Mix rating for runway 10 one Altimeter 29096. So... I actually know somebody who failed an IFR check ride before the airplane even left the ground because they got out to the airplane and they had an IFR, they had a VFR altimeter and the examiner said, uh, is this, is this altimeter legal for IFR? And the student, uh, the the person taking the check ride, said, "Yep." <laughs> and the examiner said, "You fail <laughs> because it's not." I mean, if if it had been, or if, if he had said, "Oh no, it's actually not," then he would have been able to try to get either a discontinuance uh, of his examiner's road town be violent, either a discontinuance or. Angela 264, wind calm, runway 07, clear to land. Clear to land 07, Angela 264. Um, if he had said, oh, no, you're correct, that's not illegal. Uh, that's not illegal IFR altimeter, then he could have either gotten a discontinuance on the check ride, which means you get to take a break and re redo it later. Or, um, or he could have tried to get a different airplane that day. Um, but the, ex the, the examiner asked him, is this illegal for an IFR flight? And he said, yes. And the examiner said, you failed. So, anyway. So here we are, moseying on in. Moseying on in. This is such a cool approach. A uh, thousand feet, I'm gonna put the mixtures full forward. Mixtures and props full forward, fuel pumps are on. Second notch of flaps. 
know if we're really going to accomplish my goal of seeing the uh, seen the airport you haven't seen the scenery but okay. pretty well on glad slope I always prefer three white and one red if I can get it as opposed to the other way around. Better off being a little bit too high than being a little bit too low, in my opinion. And there's short final. Looks like I know what I'm doing. Almost looks like I know what I'm doing. That was a bit of a clunker, but really, all things considered, it wasn't bad. So. Angela 264, vacate at Charlie and taxi to parking. You have a good day. See ya. Uh, right on Charlie and taxi to parking for Angula 264. Thanks a lot for your help. Have a great night. Thank you. So, I'm going to lean those mixtures again, like we always talk about. That's a little Charlie symbol right there. I wish I had, all right, hold on. All right, we're gonna pull up here, put, turn my fuel pumps off. And, uh, let's see. Uh, let's, what I'm trying to do is get my, uh, is to get the taxi chart here. So I can show you, or at least so I know kind of what I'm doing, where I'm going here. And there we are. Really not a whole lot. Canadian two, Christian Canadian five one two, wind zero nine or zero. So we'll change that right there. And here we go, folks. Here's our first look at Terence B. Lutzen International Airport. I know I didn't. Uh, pick the ideal time to kind of do this little intro here. But, um, we get a good nighttime view of this airport. We'll come back and do another. Maybe this is a good question for you guys. Are you guys interested in airport reviews? Because I, I own quite a few of these airports in the Caribbean, and I also have, like, all the, you know, kind of all the freeware ones. Some of them are very, very good. Uh, some of the freeware airports are absolutely as good as any of the payware. 
Um, and so, if you guys are interested, I would be happy to do just some straight up airport reviews. Alright, mixtures idle, cut off. Throttles are idle. Lights coming off. Avionics master and battery always come off before the magnetos. Magnetos are off. Let's turn the panel lights off. Kind of wish there was an easier way to do that. Master and battery switches off. Let's open the doors. Let the human beings free. And there it is, guys. This is Terence B. Lutzum International Airport. And uh, I, I, I kind of I picked a cool time to fly. It's pretty, but I didn't pick a good time to do this airport justice. Although I love those lights, these uh, these uh, light posts. It's awesome. Um, so I'm sitting here watching the sun go down. Um, so, uh, leave a comment. Let me know if you guys are interested in airport reviews. I'm definitely going to come back and do a review of this airport. Because this airport is really cool. And uh, I cannot believe that I didn't get my nose wheel all the way to the mark. I really thought I had. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the flight, and we will see you next time.